In this modern world of parametric designs, BIM, sustainable buildings, smart cities, and so many other contemporary building arts, does history of architecture fit somewhere in the picture of modern world? How history and architecture connected? And do we really need history of architecture as a subject in our schools? Hello, myself Piyush Pant, an architect and a professor, will be guiding you in this video with help of examples and facts to make you understand and give answers to similar type of questions before you start learning history of architecture as your subject. You can download the PDF notes for this video from the video description. So let's begin. So let's get an answer to the very first question coming to every fresh architecture student that is how history and architecture connected. During the course of your architectural education, a portion of your time is spent acquiring knowledge on previous styles, movements, theories and philosophies. These topics are generally taught through history and theory of architecture subjects. It has wide range from the classical orders and mathematical genius of the Greek to the Roman genius within construction and inventions to the fundamentals of Renaissance architecture and many more. You will often be bombarded with hours of the best and worst of architecture and architectural theories from the past, present and future. Architecture students often ask themselves, why is it necessary to learn of past styles and movements if I am living in a contemporary world? The answer is not so easily expressed. It is important to go through in detail to understand the complex role of architectural history within the field of architecture. The relevance of architectural history is felt throughout one's school career and into the workplace. The amalgamation of knowledge and the experimentation within architecture allows an in-depth understanding of the relationship between its form and function and its socio-economic contribution. The history lectures themselves allow you to acquire more than just the history of buildings, but also the outside philosophies, revolutionary ideas and technologies. These all shape the ideals of the architectural world in terms of space, place and form. In essence, we look at the design of space and place through the work and writings of architects, designers and philosophers of past eras. In order to move forward, it is very important to first understand what is behind us that will allow us to move beyond it, to improve upon it or to move away from it. History is a vast subject, but is very necessary and valuable key to understand architecture. Architecture has always been very close to civilization's development. In fact, we can see architecture as a mirror reflecting civilization changes, advancements and hopes throughout history. The same applies to other forms of art and culture, but architecture since it's not only a form of art but also catering to fundamental human needs can sometimes be a deeper portrait of what happened in a certain place at a certain time. By studying history of architecture, we not only study history of civilization but since architecture is a coherent chain of events, styles, tendencies, beliefs and techniques we also gain a direct understanding of how and why architecture is made today and clues to how architecture can be tomorrow. There are a few examples which can help you understand the strong connection between history and architecture and how various architects have used the connection for the betterment of the society and culture. Le Corbusier, a very famous architect, tried to improve on the proportional perfection of the Vitruvian man of Leonardo da Vinci with his own invention the modular man. And further, that became the basis of his architectural theories and design. Similarly, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe sought to recreate the expression of light within Gothic architecture as inspiration for his minimalistic creations with space and form. In conclusion, they both created a style unique in its expression while utilizing the knowledge of the past. Another example comes from America when we look at the prairie style pioneered by Frank Lloyd Wright. In its early work, the form and flow of the space shows some parallels with the vernacular language of Japanese architecture. So we can say that 
Frank Lloyd Wright attempted to take inspiration from the Japanese. Learning about architectural history allows the individual a bank of knowledge with barely a conscious thought. Without that knowledge, creativity is discouraged and architectural expression suffers as a result. Now as we got understanding of connection between history and architecture, let's understand what is history of architecture. The history of architecture traces the changes in architecture through various traditions, regions, stylists, trends and dates based on various branches of architecture like civil, sacred, naval, military and landscape architecture. The study of architecture history is the discipline that records, studies and interprets architecture. It studies its forms, purposes and most important, its evolution, as ancient architecture can easily be observed and recorded. Studying architectural history enables us to understand the society and culture they represent which is very useful when working as a contemporary architect. Comparing and studying ancient and contemporary architecture is essential. It allows an architect to consider a buildings or cities as more than a visual phenomena and therefore the architect would have a more fundamental and culturally inclusive approach to architecture than an approach based purely on architect's own taste or style. Architectural history go into depth of our man-made environmental heritage. If you have an appetite for history and wish to see cultural heritages preserved, read on to explore education and career option in this field of study. But why is studying architectural history important? Studying the history of architecture is extremely important because unlike studying history in other disciplinary groups, the purpose of studying the history of architecture when practicing contemporary architecture is to understand how architecture influences society and its culture. In other words, students can study the history of architecture in order to understand how and why each era since the beginning of time formed its own unique style. The why is what really must be understood in order to produce the kind of an architecture our contemporary society needs because Architecture should reflect the philosophies prevalent at any given time. However, architectural history, like any other form of historical study, is subject to the limitation and subjectivity of history as a discipline. It is important to understand why a building was created a certain way in any given point in history. For example, the feudal castles were built with not only defense in mind, but also to allow civilians and livestock to come inside during a time of war. Whereas Gothic architecture was designed in order to inspire and impress in the minds of the people every time when they saw them. Even to this time we are impressed by that. The study of architectural history can also be a good way to inspire modern day architects into trying new forms of design. Without access to differing styles of architecture, a designer would become stagnant and locked into one kind of building. If nothing else, the study of historical architecture will help to stimulate the creative juices in the minds of the students and this will make far more creative and flexible architects overall. For these reasons, it is important to study ancient architecture and learn the how and why these buildings were constructed. Architectural history falls within the broad category of social sciences. The study of architectural history helps one to understand the landscape and urban built environment, beginning with ancient times and progressing to contemporary life. Understanding such history is important in fostering appreciation for how surrounding structures affect our lives in a broader culture context. The brilliance of architecture now is that architecture is at turning point where no one language is dominant. This allows for the utilization of history as a tool to better understand the capability of space and place. In essence, without the education in the history of architecture in schools, future architects would miss out on the importance and significance of architectural language, past and its role in current architecture.